I see uh, Senator Rosen. Would you like to go ahead? Because you're the first member on Senator Rosen. Perfect. Thank you very much, Senator Klobuchar. And uh, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here today uh, and uh, um, springing this hearing. It's much needed, and I think it's the first of many. But I'd like to start off by expressing that my thoughts are with the brave Capitol Police officers. They put their lives on the line to protect us on January 6th, and their heroic actions, like the ones of Eugene Goodman, they redirected those violent rioters away from us. Um, they're going to forever be embedded in our minds. And we know that so many of these courageous men and women, they're really hurting in the aftermath of the insurrection. And um, I've been particularly heartbroken to hear about the death of Capitol Police Officer Howard Liebengood. He was protecting the Senate since 2005. He was stationed by the door of my Russell office. Uh, my prayers are with him and his family and his loved ones. But, you know, when the ex insurrectionists, when they came to storm our Capitol on January 6th, they came armed not only with weapons, but also with hate. Mere weeks before International Holocaust Remembrance Day, the world watched in horror as a rioter inside the Capitol proudly wore a Camp Auschwitz shirt as he and others violently pushed forward on the House and the Senate floors. All the while, the rioters, they're waving Confederate flags, they're hanging nooses on the front lawn, they're verbally assaulting a Jewish reporter outside the Capitol, saying, you are cattle today. That refers to cattle cars that used to transport Jews, that were used to transport Jews to Nazi death camps during the Holocaust. This violent attack on the Capitol uh, uh, featured followers from the anti-Semitic QAnon conspiracy theory. So, Mr. Conti, on January 4th, Metro Police Department arrested Enrique Torrio, leader of the racist anti-Semitic Proud Boys hate group. FBI claims the next day is shared with MPD concrete intelligence about extremist plans for violence on January 6th, including specific threats on members of Congress. Maps of the tunnels under the Capitol complex. If MPD was tracking extremist, potentially violent white supremacist activity, then what exactly did you know on January 5th? And why didn't you alert anyone? Thank you for that question. Uh, what the FBI sent mail on January this, uh, 5th was in the form of an email. Uh, I would certainly think that something as violent as an insurrection of the Capitol uh, would warrant um, you know, a phone call or something. But as Chief Sun mentioned earlier, uh, the information that was sent was un, uh, it was uncooperated uh, information. It was raw uh, information that we had. Uh, that we receive uh, through the same lines, through the JTTF. Uh, that information uh, was not uh, fully vetted and it had not been sent uh, through the chains of the Metropolitan Police Department. The, the Metropolitan Police Department was prepared for was the larger uh, violence and demonstrations that we expected to see in our city. That, that's fine. I have, I have to ask Mr. Sun the same question now. What did you know as of Tuesday night, January 5th? Because I, I have a follow-up for both of you uh, on this one. So quickly, Mr. Sun, what did you know on January 5th? And were you alarmed or, or not alarmed? What, what did you expect? Uh, so, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was concerned. We had the intelligence that was coming out, the intelligence that we'd be planning for. Again, keep in mind, the intelligence assessments that we had developed at the end of December, the beginning of, and the one for January 3rd were very, very similar. They just provided a little bit more uh, specificity. So we had already been planning for the, the threat for violence, the threat for armed possible people uh, protesting, and that's what we we're um, uh, planning for. Now, if you're referring to the uh, Norfolk uh, letter again, uh, I just became aware that the department was aware of that 24 hours ago. Uh, so on the 6th or the 5th or the 4th, I was not aware that memo existed. So, so you're saying that there's a breakdown between you and the FBI because we have rallies, protests, and things happen in Washington all the time. Uh, how many do you, could both of you just maybe give a guess, how many do you think are usually with armed insurrectionists or come heavily armed out of the uh, hundreds, perhaps thousands of uh, rallies that we see in Washington uh, through, the, through the year? We know the last three uh, incidents, the first two MAGA rallies, men and women of the Metropolitan Police Department uh, recovered firearms from several people who were attending 
uh, the, the demonstrations uh, at, at, at the first MAGA rally as well as the second one. Aside from that, those are, have been really the only, uh, the only demonstrations where we've seen individuals coming on. Well, do you think this was an intelligence breakdown or a resource issue? I think that the intelligence uh, is not, did not make it where it needed uh, to be. Uh, in so terms you, think the of FBI, the, you think the FBI did not raise this to the level they needed to with the Metropolitan Police Department, in your mind? We received it in the form of an email that came as an, an alert bulletin at 7 o'clock p.m. the day before. Mr. Uh, Al, Poster, Al Poster is the Metropolitan Police Department. Again, I think, uh, you know, it's reflected in our deployment in terms of not just the, the uh, National Guard that was deployed, but as well as other officers from surrounding jurisdictions. That reflected the seriousness that we took with respect to the threats that we were expecting to see in the city. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sund. Can you tell me, do you think this was a, um, a resource issue or intelligence breakdown or something else? If you uh, be brief, because this is very important. Yeah, be, and, uh, yes, ma'am, I'll be you. very brief. It was part of my introduction. I think it was, it was more than just the Norfolk letter. I think we need to look at the whole entire intelligence community and the view they have on some of the uh, domestic extremists and the uh, effect that they have. I look at this as a intelligence uh, problem that impacted this event, yes. So what information would you be would you have had to have heard to have raised up the flag to to get more resources for the Capitol Police? Because thank goodness, I mean we, we saw loss of life and thank goodness there wasn't more, but one is too many. So what what is your threshold then? What should be the threshold to well, protect the Capitol and protect your officers? Mm -hmm. I did uh, in advance reach out to the Washington DC police to coordinate resources. And I did also go to the, uh, both the House and Senate Sergeant Arms to request the National Guard. Um, and okay. Mr. Conti, um, I think I have five seconds and we can take this off the record, but I believe that there's planning, uh, there's some plans by QAnon for something to happen at the Capitol on March 4th. I wanna hear what steps we're taking to protect the Capitol uh, on March 4th. Uh, from any, uh, any more violent extremists. Thank you.